Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed for part one of what will be our September Q&A. As you can see, we have a new desk here. So Tim and I have been busy making this desk just now uh, in time to film the Q&A. And we also got what Tim calls our new executive seat. So we've got some real seats. Tim's given back uh, his grandma the seats that we oh, had here previously. <laughs> we've got some nice new seats, a new table. Look at that. No... Uh, lens distortion, as people thought, was the case with the old desk that was bowed in the middle. It wasn't. It was just really cheap. It, it was just very sad. So he has a proper desk now. It's got to be uh, painted, a uh, proper coat on top that'll be nice and scratch resistant. And then Tim can film all his B-roll. And when I come over to do our Patreon live streams, which we just did a Patreon live stream for an hour, built the desk, and now it's time for the Q&A. Anyway, enough waffling about the Q&A. We have some great questions to get into, so let's do it. Okay, I believe this was the most upvoted question, so we'll yeah, start right. with that. It's yep. probably also going to be in the title because it'll be a hotly... Well, it was upvoted, so that's probably all I need to say. Uh, question is, what do you think about the upcoming RX 680 rumours? So I'll let you start with that. You got anything? Yeah, well, I mean, let's be honest, we haven't heard anything, have we? Well, we certainly haven't heard anything official. Yeah. And if we'd signed any NDAs or whatever, we probably couldn't comment, but... We haven't heard anything, so I don't know what that tells you. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out v relatively soon. That's what the rumours are saying. Mid-October, right? and I would have thought if it was, we would have heard something, but maybe we'll hear something tomorrow. Yeah, who knows? So, I, yeah, that one we haven't heard too much. I am probably expecting uh, a refresh for the RX range. So the RX, you know, yeah, RX 580 would to become a 560. Sense. So maybe a, similar to what NVIDIA's done, a 12nm refresh, just to keep them competitive at the mid-range, because you will get the GTX 2060. Uh, not sure how much sense that will make. We were discussing that before in our Patreon live stream. But they want to remain competitive there. So I think we will see probably a 12nm refresh, 12nm refresh, uh, and then the 7nm stuff next year. Yeah, and I would expect the 7nm stuff is going to be at least focused on the high end, so yeah, that'll be your Vega, um, whether Vega or not they yeah. also refresh the mid-range, well, probably yeah, a bit later, but... They've been a bit disconnected. Um, yeah, with their with, two different architectures yeah, for yeah. high and mid, so... Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting rumour. It sort of came out of nowhere, really. Um, it's definitely just a rumour at this point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't be too surprised, but we don't have any extra information. All right, Sawyer asks, what does the TI or TI, some people say it either way, what does the TI in 1080TI slash 2080TI stand for? Well, I believe it stands for titanium. Yeah, didn't they, NVIDIA, originally say that right in the original I can't. TI, TI launch? I'm certain it's titanium. That's what I've always thought going way back. It's one of those things, you don't remember the origins of when it was first said, yeah. but... I'm certain it's titanium, which is why some mostly American guys seem to say Thai. It's probably correct, but it sounds rubbish. Yeah. TI, TI sounds, sounds better. better. So that's why we go with TI rather than Thai. I think Wendell over at Level 1 Tech says Thai. So that's probably a good reason to say Thai. <laughs> but anyway, we don't. Okay, next question. How and when did Steve and Tim meet? Oh. <laughs> Most underrated uh, channel on YouTube. Kept the good work. Love the content. Well, thank you very much. Uh, hmm. I don't really know how far back. So we both wrote or we both produced content for TechSpot. And I've yep. been doing that for over a decade now. You've probably been doing it for a while as well. Probably about five, six years now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be going probably double that. Uh, it's quite coincidental, really, because yeah. everyone from TechSpot is all over the place. There's about a dozen staff members, and I don't think there's more than about two guys, two or three guys that are in the same region. And as far as I was aware, I was the only Australian. And then we had a guy producing mobile phones, laptops, and I'm like, wow, this content's really good. This is in-depth. I'm enjoying reading this stuff. And I said to the owner of TechSpot, you know, who's this new guy? I think it was about a year after you'd been writing, mind you. Yeah, yeah, it was. But, yeah, about a year or two after Tim had been writing. It was quite a long time. I said, oh, you know, who's this guy? And he said, oh, it's Tim. Don't you know Tim? I'm like... Well, I can see that it's Tim. It says his name, but why would I know Tim? He said, oh, he's an Australian as well. Oh, okay. All Aussies know each other, so he was right yeah. to think He's that. like, you know that little slice that's down there? Everyone yeah. knows everyone. Uh, so I can't even remember how I reached out to you, whether it was an email or I think it must have been an email. It like, might have been our private tech spot stuff. Yeah, it could chat. have actually been. Yeah. I, yeah, it could have been that. And I just, hey, you're in Australia. Where in Australia are you? And Tim's like, Victoria. Yeah. And I said, huh, so am I. I was really puzzled to find out that you were in Australia as well and we <laughs> so, had no idea about so it. So, yeah, years. Tim was 
familiar with my work as well and had no idea that I was an Australian, just assumed I was probably based in the US. So it was like a year after that, I was having a LAN party. I used to do that back in my 20s. And I was having a heap of mates come over. There was about a dozen of us playing Call of Duty, I think it was. Can't remember. It was a bit of fun anyway. Yeah, that was pretty good. And I said, Tim, do you want to come join in? You were in Geelong at the time, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. So Tim was quite far away. It was a massive hike for him. Anyway, he came out and spent the day gaming. and It was good. Yeah. yeah fun times. And then it was about a year after that, you were doing YouTube videos for TechSpot. Yeah, there was a bit of that, and then you obviously started Hardware Unboxed, and I sort of signed on as a one of the you were, founding subscribers, I guess. Yeah. I was right there in the hundreds. Yeah. And then, obviously, yeah, So Tim later. knew about the audio stuff, the camera stuff. I'd never done video before, so when we were starting Hardware Unboxed, I got a few tips from Tim. Tim was happy to give them. And then he said, when I finish my engineering degree, I'm going to go into the workforce, but I would like to still play around with phones and laptops so it'd be cool if i could do a video once every week or two and we're like yeah happy to have yeah, you on as a guest not, right? and yeah then matt left the channel tim came on full time and here we are in the september q a all right this is yeah this is a pretty interesting and topical question i think will the new u.s tariffs have knock-on effects for other countries markets so non economics or politics expert can't say i follow it too closely but it does appear to be that the whole Trump China thing is currently causing prices of some electronics goods to increase because a lot of those are manufactured in China. Okay. There's now an import tariff to the US for Chinese made goods, something along those lines. Don't quote me exactly. I, I on have that. no idea. So, I have th yeah, touched this question. That seems to be causing some things. I think like graphics card prices have been raised um, okay. from some partners that manufacture their cards in China. Um, so the question is, will that have knock-on effects for other countries? Um, I wouldn't have thought that it would unless those countries impose tariffs. Um, you know, if it, that should only be a US-China thing, you would think. But at the same time, a lot of companies base their pricing off the US prices. So if they raise the US prices, that might cause yeah. the price to hike everywhere else. Could be so, quite complicated, yeah. So. Yeah, so probably a company-by-company company thing. Again, here in Australia, we already have plenty of Australia tax, so it'd be pretty mean of them to um, increase that, but you never know. Yeah, building a gaming PC... Well, we thought it was bad in January of this year when I did yeah. my series, and in a lot of ways, it hasn't got that much better overall. It has in some ways, but anyway. Yeah. Hmm. All right, question from Jazz. I know you can't share much about your i9 9900K, but can you at least say it runs on Z370? So what's the answer, uh, Steve? Well, I did see this question in the community thread this morning, and I didn't know the answer this morning. But as you guys know, I'm not under NDA, uh, and I feel like it's really information you should know anyway. I don't know why Intel would hide that. So anyway, the, it's good news, you can. So the, yeah. the 9900K will work on any of the 300 series boards, and right now it is working on Z370 boards. So. I updated yep. the BIOS of the ASUS board in my test system, dropped the CPU in, booted up straight away into Windows, identifies the CPU and works perfectly fine. So you can use it on your Z370 boards. I will be doing a lot of benchmarking with hopefully a lot of Z370 boards to see how it performs even on the really cheap ones, whether we see some thermal throttling, some VRM throttling, yep. uh, and how that all works out. But anyway, the good news is if you've got a nice high-end motherboard like a Z370 Godlike or something like that, you can drop in the 8-core, 16-thread Core i9 processor if you wish. All right, these next two questions are quite long, so I'm going to let Tim read them out and save my voice a bit because it's killing me. Yeah, that's what happens when you get old. Uh, with all the focus from NVIDIA surrounding ray tracing, do you believe that DLSS actually shows a more promising case for the RTX cards and uh, that we should be waiting for real-world benchmarks before making any future purchase of the series. From what I've seen, DLSS could give these cards a genuine boost in FPS performance. So, by the time this Q&A comes out, my video on DLSS should already have come out on the <laughs> channel, hopefully. So, at the time of filming, it's not actually out, but... Um, yes, the answer to that is not really. Um, DLSS and ray tracing both seem you know, like they'll be in a couple of games and in plenty of games won't support those features. But I think crucially what we saw with DLSS is that it doesn't look that much different to downscaling the resolution using a resolution slider to around 1800p. So when you put the two images side by side, 4K native looks better. DLSS looks about the same as 1800p and rendering natively at 1800p is around the same performance. So as far as I can tell, 
from the very limited amount of demos, and I mentioned this in that <laughs> video, um, DLSS doesn't look like it's all that impressive. I think the technology is impressive from it takes 1440p and upscales it using black magic, <laughs> but compared to techniques we can already use, and this is only one technique, there's plenty of others we can't even test right now, uh, yeah, it just doesn't seem like DLSS will be that killer feature for Turing. It would be great if there was a killer feature, but I don't think DLSS will be that. Hmm. Next question. What is your honest opinion about Turing? Do you think Turing is a placeholder GPU architecture between now and next release for a quick sales grab to boost market share, seeing as AMD cannot compete for some time? Do you think is here to suck in consumers into a GPU generation where ray tracing is not quite there yet, considering blur, but yeah, blah, blah, blah. DLSS is blurry up scaling feature, which doesn't look to be a hit. Okay, so what's our opinion on Turing? Uh, I think we pretty much nailed it in our announcement video six weeks ago now, whenever it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty much the questions to, or the answer to your questions, rather, are yes, 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 and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not that impressive. I mean, the 2080 well, Ti is fast. Well, again, we talked about this on the Patreon live stream. The 2080 Ti is very fast, super impressive. And, you know, whenever I say that, people are like, it's not though in terms of value. It's not in terms of value. But anything that's 30% faster on average and up to 55 or 50% faster than the 1080 Ti is mighty impressive. Because, well, before that, the 1080 Ti was mighty impressive. So it's... It, it's breathtaking at 4K. And yep. Tim's been playing with it at 4K with HDR and says it's just incredible. So it's good in that sense. Uh, and I suppose because of that, you could justify the 2080 Ti as I've said in various content pieces now. The 2080 makes absolutely no sense. I don't think it ever will. It certainly doesn't right now. Uh, D DLSS doesn't seem like it will make it worthwhile. Yeah. Unless it radically changes from what we've seen so far. Uh, ray tracing. Yeah, it's... Don't think so. So really, it's been the 2080 Ti series. Yep. And the, the, the 2080 is a completely pointless product that doesn't make sense at the current price. $700 US, it's like, okay. Yeah. Might as well buy it if you're getting a high-end card. The 2070 is going to be a super, super tough sell. And then Tim and I are scratching our heads as to what they're going to do with like the 2060 and lower. Yeah. How Turing versions of those make sense. So, yeah, I mean, you're saying the question, is it a placeholder? Uh, it's definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely a placeholder. Like a placeholder. Yeah. That's what we said in the announcement video. So my, I think my announcement video, if we end up being right, which it's looking more and more like we are, was hit the nail on the head with that one, that this is a bit of a money grab, sort of lingering between what they can ultimately end up doing. So they decided to do this, and probably 12 months later, you'll see what they... Yeah. We're I really mean, undo. I mean, the architecture, there's a lot of interesting new stuff that is happening in the architecture. It's a big change from Pascal, but it's mm. just in the products that have been announced and the way that they're priced and everything, it's just not that good. So some guy on the internet asks, uh, best budget GPU for 3840 by 1200 for 120 FPS low to medium settings. So 3840 by 1200 is that ultra wide metric, so or resolution, I should say. So it's yeah, not going to be as demanding as full 4K, but if you still want to play at 120 FPS, low to medium settings, you're still going to need something reasonable at that well, it depends, resolution. Well, it depends what the game is as well. It does depend on the game. If we're talking Fortnite, it's like just get something. <laughs> is, it, is it Fortnite low to medium or yeah. shut off the Tomb Raider? In either case, I would I would say something like a GTX 1070. Yeah, that's the exact thing I was going to say. Actually. And so, yeah, 1070. If the 1070 is not much more, get that, overclock it, 1080 type yep. performance but then when we were looking at the, the second hand deals last month's q a it seemed like the 1080 was probably the way to go second hand yeah so definitely check out all those sort of deals but certainly you're not going to get away with like a 1050 at that sort no. of resolution even on low to medium 1060 like would possibly work with like your fortnights yeah but not yeah not the real amazing looking triple a titles okay next question do your significant others now hate the word benchmark <laughs> Uh, my wife doesn't particularly care. Yeah, no, no, my girlfriend doesn't care, so, yeah. It's not, like... I think not was, yet. Well, we were talking about this when we went to get lunch. It's funny being on YouTube that you get a lot more recognition for doing what I've always done. Like, we were talking about the text question yeah, yeah, earlier, yeah. Where how we met. I've been doing this job for almost 20 years now. Admittedly, we 
put a bit more time into it now than we did originally. But even so, 10 years ago, we were still doing hugely in-depth benchmarks. But on the tech sites, it just seems to be a bit different to YouTube. Yep. Uh, so I've always, you know, a new game's come out and my wife's like, yeah, I'll see you in two or three days. So nothing's yep. really changed there. Just the way it is. Yep. She's like, oh, nice break. <laughs> so I think this user's name is Crimson, something like that. Crimson. Yeah. Pretty cool. Kind of All right. Uh, how do you think the Australian parts market will turn out for the foreseeable future? And do you see a price improvement imminent for any specific part anytime soon? So... I really think the Australian parts market is too different to any other market. Yes, yeah, it's probably a more of a global question, really. Yeah, I mean, our parts are obviously inflated compared to the just direct conversion, but that's always been the case with Australia tax and all that sort of thing. So, you know, anything that gets more expensive overseas is going to get more expensive here. As for, you know, is anything going to become more affordable? I wouldn't have thought. So anything that's, you know, becoming affordable is just going to become affordable, but... Yeah, I Especially mean, in GPUs, doesn't the, seem like the it. Intel CPU price hikes that we've seen, that's a global thing due to a yeah. supply shortage. The ninth gen CPUs are probably going to come in being quite expensive. Uh, yeah, so... You've got Ryzen, which is decent in terms of price, very good in terms of price, but then we've got the GPUs that have done that. RAM prices have come down a little bit. SSDs are quite good. So stuff's all over the place. It never, We haven't got that perfect... Those perfect conditions where you have low memory, low graphics cards, or relatively low. Yeah. Uh, there's always something that kind of blows the budget out for the new builds. Okay, next question. Do you think your RTX samples are hand-picked to be better? Um, not from what we've seen compared to no, well, other the, reviews and testing. The partner cards that I've got have all been in sealed retail packaging, which doesn't mean they haven't been tested, but they look very... like. All the gold contacts looked like they never touched anything before. It looked brand new, completely mint. So yep. I doubt it, and they really have no reason to because it'd just be a lot of time and effort on their hand to get a card that if a reviewer does the right thing and really, really fine-tunes that they might get 20 more megahertz out of it. It's not worth it. They don't really overclock that well. It's the same thing we saw with Pascal. So it's not like a you know, an 8700K CPU where, you know, my review sample hit 5.3 gigahertz, but we found that the average hits 5 to maybe 5.1. Okay, next question here. More DX12 support with ray tracing? And then I think there's a second completely unrelated part here. Could it be possible that NVIDIA is power throttling their cards because <laughs> there isn't any competition, but once AMD releases their high-end GPU, they could open the floodgates in terms of power use? So I'll first I'll answer the ray tracing part. Um, more DX12 support with ray tracing? I wouldn't think so. I just think that if a game has DX12 support in it, it might have ray tracing. A lot of engines that are built on DX11, I can't see being upgraded just for ray tracing. And of course, ray tracing also works with Vulkan. And for the second part, could it be possible NVIDIA is power throttling their cards? It does seem like there are some power limits. They could probably push a bit higher, but it seems like we're pretty close to the sort of clock speed ceiling as it is. So I can't really... I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, can't really see that being a, a thing. Okay, next question. What is the future of AMD in graphics? I don't think uh, things will change too much from yep. what we've seen in the past. They'll continue on. I, I feel like they will become much more competitive again. Fingers crossed they do. But I think they will. And they're just waiting for that 7 nanometer uh, node shrink that they're going to do on their workstation, their compute products first, and then that'll trickle down when yields improve to the more affordable consumer grade stuff intended more for gaming. And I think that is going to be really, really impressive. What do you yep. reckon? Yeah, I reckon that's about it. Okay, this question's from good old Sal Kagan <laughs> in our Discord chat. So it'll be good. What are you guys' thoughts on how much more incredible looking the Turing cards are from AIBs than their Pascal and previous SKUs? And do you guys have a personal favorite looking Turing card? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, well, the first part of the question, do they look much more incredible? I don't know they do. Do they? No, they look pretty similar. I, I think they're, they're pretty... Well, the Gigabyte ones, they got rid of the orange highlights, which I suppose that's an incredible upgrade. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was some really impressive Pascal cards. Like, the Aorus brand cards were big and beefy and ran well. Yeah. And MSI had more high-end 1080 Ti models that I can remember. There was the... The Gaming X model, the Lightning Z model, um, yep. the Trio, the Gaming X Trio. So that, that was a heap of high-end, really nice models. And they've 
just merge them together with the 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure you'd you would have had to give some examples for that one, but I think they're pretty much the same. And then what was the other part of the question? What was our personal favorite looking one? I really like that new Aorus card that ha that's coming out soon. I am getting a sample of that as well. I think I'll be getting the 2080 Ti. I think next month, though, is when they'll be coming out. Yeah, I agree. That one does look quite nice. So that looks good. The Asus model looks pretty cool. The Batmobile-ish type looking one that everyone says. That looks good. Uh, obviously, I loved the MSI uh, Gaming X Trio. That was cool. It still has a couple of red highlights that I would have liked to have seen gone, and that would have made it just perfect for me. Um, but yeah, I, I think they all look really good, and they've all got yep. big coolers. They seem to all perform really well. Even the Founders Edition looks good. Okay, that is going to do it for part one. We will have part two with many more questions on the channel this time tomorrow. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And it's probably too late to get any questions in for the next <laughs> one. But keep an eye out for next month because we do, this, do do this once a month. And it's a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'm your host, Tim. We'll Got it right that time. <laughs> see you again next time. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> oh.